So welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Tierney, president of Digital Anarchy. And in this tutorial, we're gonna discuss using texture and bump maps in 3D Invigorator's Material Editor. Using texture maps can really enhance your materials and are one of the more exciting capabilities of 3D Invigorator. So uh, let's dive into it. In past tutorials, we've talked about texture maps and reflection maps, so let's review those. The texture map gives an object its color or surface texture. Usually an object will take on the color selected by the color swatch, which is right there. And using a texture map overrides this. When I select my texture map, my object now uses that map. So I can come in here to my invigorator maps and select my brick texture. Select the red bricks here and open that. And that will apply this brick texture to my object. And it's important to note here that the texture map behaves differently on the sides than it does on the front and back. On the front and back, the texture is projected on. So it looks as if a projector was using the object as a movie screen and projecting that texture right out there. On the sides, it's mapped a little bit differently. You can't exactly just project onto this curved surface. And so it's mapped on there. And this creates a little bit of a problem in that the sides don't really look much like the front and back. So usually the way around that is to use multiple textures. Uh, use your object styles. You make use of your materials palette down here. And of course, make use of your profile as well. So let's move this around a little bit. So what we want to do here is have the front and back have this brick texture, but then have the sides have just kind of a flat brick color. And the way to do that is I have a material already saved out that is really just the color of the bricks, not a brick texture. And I'm going to click and drag that over to my profile viewer and apply that to the side bevels. And now you can see that gets rid of all of the striations and kind of weird mapping that we had going on along the sides. So if I render that out. Now it's true you don't get exactly the continuation of the surface texture here, but it creates a good compromise between the ideal situation, which would be to have these black lines continue right through the texture or right through the object, and the less ideal situation of having the texture be mapped incorrectly all the way around. So you can see what it looks like when I have this brick texture mapped onto the sides. It really doesn't add much to it and doesn't really look very realistic. The texture map is pretty important for many types of materials, uh, whether you're just adding scratches onto metal or creating natural textures like wood. It does give you a lot of flexibility in the types of materials that you can create in 3D Invigorator and apply to your 3D objects. The reflection map provides something for the object to reflect. Whenever you look at a reflective object, you know it's reflective because you can see the environment of the object in the object itself. A mirrored ball in a white box will look significantly different than the same ball that's sitting in the middle of a forest somewhere. And the reason for that is different environments. So if I turn off my brick material here, and let's just go back to our red material. So now if I apply a reflection map of a forest, you're going to see that I get a pretty significantly different look than if I were to apply something like a texture map of a desert. And so we can see this a little bit more clearly. Let's just turn this object white and render that out. And you can see the green highlights in the heart shape we have here. Now if I go off and change this to the an image of a desert, we of course are going to get a pretty significantly different look. Instead of nice green highlights, I now have kind of reddish orange highlights. And so the environment map is extremely important to how the object's going to look. If you're going to place a 3D logo or text or something within a an ad or something, it's very useful to apply that ad as a reflectivity map so that the object is sort of reflecting the environment it's actually in. So reflection maps are pretty important to the overall look of your object. 
Let's move on to bump maps. Bump maps make it appear as if the 3D object has a rough surface. Usually these are grayscale maps where the map is 50% gray. Let's jump out of Invigorator and take a look at a grayscale map. Where the map is 50% gray, which is going to be kind of around these areas, there's not going to be any distortion at all. It's just going to be looking like a flat surface. And in fact, if you have a bump map that's a single color of any shade, uh, mostly it's going to look like a flat surface. But where there's black and white, the maximum amount of distortion is going to occur. So if we go back into Invigorator, you see right now bumpiness is set to zero. So there's not really going to be any bumpiness at all, regardless of whether you have a texture map there or not, because it's set to zero. As we increase this, we're going to see the bumpiness of the object also increase. Now this will not show up in the preview window. You do have to render the preview out to see how the bump map affects the object. So if I render the preview, you'll see now that I've got a distorted surface on my object. And as I increase that, I get more distortion. And so bump maps are pretty critical depending on what you have going on. Uh, so if I turn off my reflectivity and turn back on the brick texture map, Right now, my bricks are looking pretty flat. They don't look very brick-like. Uh, let's actually put my brick color back over onto the sides. And now I'm going to apply a bump map created from the same brick texture map. And so what happens now when I render this out is you can see that there's a little bit of depth to my bricks. It's not just the flat surface that I had originally. If I turn this off, you can see the difference. It just gives me that extra little bit of depth that kind of helps sell the effect. So if you want the material to appear to have depth or a surface that looks a little bit worn or used, bump maps are pretty critical to that. Transparency maps act similar to bump maps. Where the map is black, the object is fully transparent. Where it's white, it's completely opaque. These work well if you only want part of the object to be visible. They're a little bit more useful uh, on primitives than on text or illustrator objects. On illustrator objects, it's a little bit easier just to go into illustrator and add a path to create transparency where you want it. So it's not quite as common to make use of transparency maps. So if I delete my heart right here and create a primitive, just grab my sphere here and come in here and apply my transparency map. I'm going to grab this interesting little circles transparency map. So now with my transparency map applied, you can see that sections of this object are completely transparent. As we rotate around it, you can see the circles in my map are punching holes right through my object. In this case, I sort of have this uh, Cyclops, Pac-Man, mutant thing going on. So if you wanted to create a, a mutant Pac-Man, this would be a great way to do it. But usually that's not really what we're trying to do. And you know, for regular objects, whether it's text or Illustrator files, the transparency option really doesn't add that much. It's much easier to do that in Illustrator or somewhere else. So that's transparency maps. Uh, the last map that you can use is for specular highlights. These can enhance a material's ability to look a little grungy or dirty. Again, like a transparency map, white is normal specular highlights and black is none. While this is useful, again, for primitives and maybe special effects, it's a little subtle for normal use. So once you've mastered other texture maps, Play around with specular highlights to kind of see what kind of effect you can get out of it. I think for most situations, it's really just going to be a little bit too subtle to worry too much about. So that's it for our texture tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed this and check out our other tutorials on digitalanarchy.com, both for Invigorator and our other products.